sort of unidirectional, mm -hmm. you know, um, way of thinking about how ideas travel, and also um, what does it mean to think about, right, what does it mean to do, to work with unlikely pairings, or to work with, right, um, ideas that seem not to fit a certain context, right? And how do we trouble, right, how is it our work to trouble those expectations about what is it natural to think about in the Argentine context, right? Um, so, um, and to, uh, I'm gonna turn to Melanie's um, questions. Um, and I think I would say a lot of similar things about your question about um, what would it mean to, to stage a, um, a hemispheric dialogue on um, black feminisms across the Americas. Um, I think one of the things that I, um, I think um, that would be interesting, I think, to do, I think first of all, right, one of the problems with the way in which we often do this is that we think about theory as something that's produced in the North, right? And then the South sort of provides sort of, you know, um, ethnographic evidence or it provides the case studies, right? So I think one way to think about this would be to think about what are the, and especially because black feminist theory has been so important, right? And has been so influential, I think it becomes very difficult to think about how do we do this analysis without overprivileging, you know, black feminism produced in the U.S.? And I think one way to, to do this is to think about, for example, if what we're looking at or what we have so, you know, I mean, there are obviously people producing um, feminist theory, um, Afro-Latin American feminists, but thinking about even, let's say, the work that people like Hisha Khan Perry or others have done on, you know, black women participating in politics. So looking at black right, mobilizing at these moments as sites for the production of theory, yeah. right? Not simply as, um, as places where we can test our theory or where we can, right, apply theory, but looking at them, and I think that helps us to have a, a less, um, a more, egal you know, egalitarian um, um, dialogue that's not simply about, right, sort of importing, um, the categories developed by um, black feminist theory. I think we also have to trouble what black feminist, US mm -hmm. black feminist theory means. I mean, Audre Lorde was from the Caribbean and we forget that, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so black feminist theory is always already transnational, you know? So um, I think we need to sort of recover um, also some of those, um, those histories. Um, and um, I'm gonna, um, in terms of, um, I think this also this speaks to your, your um, excellent point about um, expanding the category of who counts as a, as a thinker. Because um, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I definitely do try to do in the <coughs> book is to say that we need to think more broadly about what counts as a text, right? So mm -hmm. if you're a political theorist, um, you're trained to think actually very narrowly about what a text is, and it's usually a kind of philosophical treatise, and that's supposed to be what, maybe you look at speeches, right, political speeches, but it's actually um, fairly narrow. And so in order to do this kind of work, because the places where people like Douglas, for example, is writing about Latin America is often in his journalism, I had to think broadly about what counted as a text that I could analyze. Um, but there's no doubt that the four people that I chose to write about are all undoubtedly, right, figures who are central to the canon of Latin American or African American political thought. So it didn't, the expansion didn't happen in that way, but I, I do think that we can do the same kind of work um, with, um, you know, with, for example, artists, and think about what would it mean to think about what kind of political ideas are, um, are, can be drawn from or are being, you know, are being staged in certain forms of cultural production. So I think there is definitely an invitation to think about those questions um, that you're posing, even though I don't necessarily um, do that directly um, in the book. Um, and um, I'm gonna move on um, to Pablo's um, questions. Um, so, um, the 
question of Afro-Latinos, I mean, one of the things that's, that's really interesting about um, uh, both Vasconcelos and Anzaldu is I think you're absolutely right, right? There's a way in which um, for both of them, um, Afro-Latinos sort of fade from view. Right, um, and particular in the sort of in, in La Raza Cosmica in Vasconcelos' case. I think what's interesting is that I think they, um, they, re they appear actually, and this goes to Josiana's question about the Caribbean, mm -hmm. they're very present in Indonesia because he's in the Dominican Republic, he's in Puerto Rico, and that's the, the, actually the text where he talks most about um, people of African descent, um, um, and he's got this, you know, this Whole quote, which you would not imagine coming from Vasconcelos, where he talks about how you know you like to paint Bolivar as if he's you know blue-eyed and, and you know the descendant of Spaniards, but in fact you know he's um, actually um, um, black or of African descent, right? So there is a way in which I think there are moments in the text, right, where Afro-Latinos do appear, but I do agree with you that I think. By and large, this becomes a story about, um, you know, kind of Indo-Hispanic, mm -hmm. right, mixture. Um, and that's, but that is also why, you know, one of the things that I, I try to do in the chapter is also to think about what does it mean um, for Vasconcelos to be at that point in the 1930s, right, at some points living in Texas during mm -hmm. the height of sort of, you know, um, anti-reconstruction backlash, racist violence, you know, this is a time of, of Latino expulsions and lynchings, right, yeah. where people are, Latinos in the U.S. are experiencing not the same level, but similar kinds of racial violence as African Americans. And in, so in Bolivarismo y Monroismo, which is um, published in 1933 or 34, um, he does talk very much about racial violence in the U.S. So I think the way that I try to address it is by highlighting those moments where you see his awareness of, of blackness. Um, but I think the, the, you know, the thrust of the whole chapter is to sort of critique this conception of Latinidad as centered around um, you know, um, Spanish indigenous mixture. Mm -hmm. you know, centered around mestizaje, and mestizaje conceived in a certain way, right? It's not mulataje, it's mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't really, um, allow for um, much space for blackness. So I think um, I think you're right about that, and um, I hope the chapter points to how we can begin to, to do some of that work of decentering this yeah. conception of mis you know this of who the of the Latino subjectivity as being mestizo in this particular conception of what mestizo is. Um, and in terms of um, Afro-Latinidad is traveling, absolutely, right? And I don't, you know, so I think if I had to do, well, in work, hopefully, future work, right? <laughs> I would like to look at Afro-Latino thinkers who have traveled, right? So if you, so thinking about figures like Schomburg mm -hmm. or people like Nascimento, Abdiaso Nascimento from Brazil or Arturo Schomburg, the Puerto Rican, um, turn African American, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bibliophile, right? Um, or the fab the great work that Courtney Morris has done on Mamie the Mena, who's involved in the um, United Negro Improvement Association, right? That there's absolutely a way in which um, Afro um, Latin Amer Afro thinkers, not just from Latin America, but from the U.S., are traveling, right, mm -hmm. across the hemisphere, and that's informing their notions of um, the racial projects and the kinds of politics that they engage in. Um, so, um, so um, yes, that's to be, to be, to come, hopefully. <laughs> um, so to um, Josiana's um, excellent questions. Um, So I talk about the dreamers briefly in the book, right, um, in terms of thinking about them as citizens who 
right, as people who are asserting a kind of enhanced democratic subjectivity even as their citizenship status is precarious. Um, and and uh, this is an example of democratic fugitivity. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree with you, so I agree that there is a way in which we can think about them in those terms. I do think, um, though, um, that the, the, the moment of possibility there is in terms of the sort of, for example, that the ways in which they're troubling, for example, ideas of, of, of gender and sexuality mm -hmm. and challenging sort of Latino mm -hmm. politics kind mm -hmm. of you know, um, so I think there's a way in which that is a kind of radical move I, um, around some issues, but I agree with you that I think the, the sort of understanding of, of, you know, who is Latino, and um, I think there is not very little, rec there's very little recognition of kind of blackness. So I think there is still this moment where, you know, it, I like this, this idea of radical brownness, right, um, still has trouble grappling with with black politics mm -hmm. and with the idea of, you know, what it would mean. I mean, for somebody even like Vasconcelos, right, even at his most radical when he is trying to trying to say, look, Latin American elites are identified with whiteness, they deny the importance of race, we need to, um, to unite around this shared racial identity that's brown mm -hmm. um, and that is, um, is what, and that will contest global white supremacy, even then, I think, obviously there are all the problems that we know yes. with that project, yeah. right? So I think there is a way in which we need to think about both the, you know, acknowledge those moments, right, of thinking about what these radical, you know, political projects have been, but also be aware of, of the limitations, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. right? And the ways in which they almost seem to require, or in Vasconcelos' case at least, um, seem to depend on a flattening out of, um, you know, um, right, in order to achieve this kind of Pan-American unity, he has to mm -hmm. flatten out the realities of a <clears throat> racial hierarchy in Latin America. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. Yes. And mm -hmm. let us take questions. Yes. From so, <coughs> question. Yes, there's one. Uh, the relationship of the book, uh, the, uh, Two ideas that came 